Um, so I've got my mic plugged in here. So this was back in June. I posted this to Facebook and not YouTube, I've realised now. Same boxes. You see how this one's a lot lower? I'm going to open it. Um, these were put here in April. There's the, the magnet's right there. It's like a Neo 52, but <clears throat> I have a larger one at my house. This, this is my mum's house. I have a cube magnet <laughs> that I haven't brought over here because it's too scary for a lot of the things. Um, yeah, okay. Opening update. It reeks, man. It smells like. So, you see the difference between the video that just popped off? It got like 2,000 views, and some people asked for what was in it. You see how this is like crystallized? It's, it's created a thing. Um, it went through a transition stage where it was creating long uh, polychains. Uh, the vernacular escapes me because it's been a while since I've had my head in it, but it was... Uh, <laughs> yeah, so there's types of uh, salt-based microbes um, anaerobic environments they prefer and it, it limits a lot of other competing life um, in that environment so that it's kind of its own control against a certain form once it's locked away and it sets up its living environment so once I set up uh, the solution in, in the past whatever did colonize in here would colonize and live in here i knew that setting out that something would dominate or or perhaps there would be zone differences where one organism would live with others or you know and i was just watching it through the seasonal changes to see if one thing would overcome another thing or if they would have a, a zone differential or if there was a super organism that would form that would have multiple different uh F phenotypic expressions, you know, like the uh, different arms on a fungus, but the bacterial version, um, or like when you uh, watch videos of types of, I think they're called semi-fours or or something fours. Is is how a uh, different colony type uh, cellular. Uh, marine jellyfish like but with smaller uh, yeah they're they're crazy basically they're when you when you look at it there seems to be almost every type available that you could have um, for that species in a way like when you look at them numerically they've got X amount of dimensions of freedom so many chains of this and that so it's kind of like a larger version of a cellular automata that you could think of encoding um, and when it came to this sort of stuff I threw in a lot of powdered iron to see what would happen because it was it was situated um, sort of homogeneously spread and it sunk as a layer due to its weight versus everything else and um, this this whole thing over the course of a year is it's been exposed to and in states of different buoyancy and uh, uh, I forget what they're called um, it's, it's something that would uh, keep everything bound like like here there's a lack of water so they're sharing uh, molecules or they've, they've, they're binding using different things or they've uh, yeah and then over time what's happened is the seal isn't great and depending on the atmospheric temperatures in Scotland it's quite humid at times um, it was sucking and pushing out like breathing over the course of a day depending on the change night day and night day and there was also a light cycle coming in here through the clear and um, I'll just progress this a little bit what's in there is a rock I picked up and collected lots of rocks and looked for a bunch of things 
this has an iridescent or candescent oil like uh, annealing gradient on it where it's translucent it's got all those weird rainbow colors even though nothing like that was ever put in here what that is is bismuth um, tiny little bit of bismuth was put in here which seems to have decomposed um, and I don't know what else would be doing this there's also copper in there and a stone so I'm, I'm not entirely sure what's happened here this is the interesting part of this entire thing and if you watch the the small short video this entire tub is now like liquid and I'm not sure what's happened to this I haven't investigated that but if this is gone that's weird and anyway, I'll progress this it was like alcohol It smelled like alcohol, like uh, I read about uh, certain types of bacteria and things being able to produce, produce that. Ether. And what was in this one is also tea bags which are put in the bottom of the terrible tea bags which is not in the for that the one beneath never been opened so very passive I, I was investigating turning this because it it did reach stasis point, so every day about midday or in the evening, um, I would turn this round 180 degrees. So on the face of the plane of the magnet, I turned it clockwise or anti-clockwise. Sometimes uh, going either other way per day, and sometimes in a full rotation just to see what would happen the spike did track the magnet what ended up happening is the magnet tended to move with the box rather rather than the box move independently of the magnet but i had different things underneath here like sliders to reduce the pressure so that first the box was actually rotating so i had a white box to start with it was a phone case turned upside down like a you would buy a Samsung or something and it's just like a hollowed out box. It was to stop this becoming unbalanced I thought it would maybe get knocked over at some point so it gave it a sort of flat bed to balance on um, and the strength of the field was still strong enough to give it a, a nice big spiky thing. I also put a, a metal credit card, you know like the shape of a credit card, it's just a piece of metal. I don't know why I, I have it, I found it on the dual carriageway next to the house. I pick things up when I walk by the, the motorway. It's just this credit card shaped piece of metal. You can probably show that at some point. It's like a playing card, you know. Um, and I put that in between these things um, at some point. I believe it was actually on top directly of the nail. So this here had a 2D plane uh, between the magnet which sort of absorbed some of this and distorted the circular nature of it but did give a rectangle that uh, matched the rectangular nature of the tub environment it was in so it was a, a small metric uh, lock onto the environment um, even though this has rounded corners so too did the card um, so it was kind of interesting to watch and there's also a divot in these box so obviously form has a, a major factor in state set and settings um, so there's like a rectangular divot which fit up and sort of gave it a, a soft lock as well um, so it's like mechanical magnetic interlocks like that that interest me because it does have a bearing on the shape of the spikes or the nodes um, which were thicker at the bottom and thinner at the top all made of 
50 nanometer particulate iron, which I believe might not actually be spherical, but might be into end pulled. So it's it's already polarized, which adds a, a a bound metric. It's not as free as a sphere, let's say, but it's, it's something to consider and look at. And I'm not sure what happens when rust occurs. Does it rust to a sphere? Which is what I think was happening with these spikes. It was getting rusted down, like eaten down, like sort of chemically sintered until these bubbles were forming in between through the reaction, I believe, all the spikes. So the spike was basically a, a bubble and iron conglomerate. Where these bubbles were so probably gas or something, or were uh, acting against the surrounding medium of the saltiness of the water and the solute version of their, or the dilute version of the iron in the water. It was interesting, anyway. Uh, and I think there was a gradient that occurred during that degradation progress uh, process where there would have been a critical point where something of interest could have occurred um, in terms of the bubble size, the mass of the spikes left and things. So there's probably critical overlaying points that could be looked at. But this is quite a rough um, experiment, of course. And uh, just to clarify, at this point the spikes had all collapsed into a center mass that still had sort of nodes of interest and of uh, integrity that retained some of the original, I'm assuming whatever biological thing completely filled this tub up at some point, it was full with like a slug-like uh, single cell just from looking at it from the outside and that's what happened to the one at the top as well before it went completely liquid it turned into like a giant I don't know like a single it, it like a what do you call it a souffle in the oven something like that and it and it swelled up and then imploded and turned into water all within its case without me touching it um just seemed to go through that last process and I think come winter as the temperature changes again because I, I set this down in April it was colder back then um, and I started a trial run with something completely different that's still in the alcove next to the house um, that's frozen over last winter it's now went through uh, the summer and well, we're into November again, but th these two things aren't freezing. Probably because of the salt content and stuff, which is interesting to me. But I thought summer would dehydrate them more. I thought we'd be left with complete dry crystals or something, or something solid. I wanted to be able to like turn it upside down and take it out, but there was always a level of moisture that was in here. And I believe that was a function of the bacterial colonies that had formed in the life that had found a way to hold on to its moisture content. Like in June when they spit on the ground, they go, <laughs> as a sign of respect, I give up moisture for you. Well, <laughs> these things here, uh, like roaches, man, cockroaches, survivors, much like, much like us humans. Okay, right, uh... Except... for the bubbles. You see them? Here. Slow electrolysis. Through light or something, I think. Because these are like... Hydrolysis. Electrolysis. Chemical olysis. Exchange of energies. Components. States of components. So bacteria. They're like coloured red, like purple. This one's thinning out after all this time. It's got a salty layer on top, like a bio layer. So it creates ion channels between. And it's slowly day and night cycles through. I don't know what's going on with the center part, but there's like different metals and rocks in that part, some iron. And it also poured a tiny bit of monster. Oh yeah, electrolytes, you know? Because idiocracy. 
one of those light drawings, baby. Yeah. Opening update. 